This is a GoTech floppy drive emulator. That's right. It emulates a floppy drive. And it does so using a incredibly <laughs> handy thing, uh, the good old flash um, dongle key, uh, key, you know, keychain flash drive type uh, memory storage. You just plug it in there and uh, it actually emulates a floppy. See, there's the old standard floppy in the background. Um, but what's inside, obviously, is not a mechanical drive, which, of course, is a beautiful thing. Now, um, basically, what you do is it comes with some uh, uh, discs. By the way, this is a Chinese uh, product. It's very affordable. Um, you can get them for, I don't know, depends, really. But um, I've seen them go for 30 to $50, depending on your shipping options, from China. But the company is called GoTech. G-O-T-E-K, and uh, they're the guys, uh, you know, if you take a look around on the, on the web, you can see an awful lot of other floppy drive emulators. I mean, once you know to look um, through Google and whatnot, you can look, and you'll see a lot of them, but uh, most of them, despite the fact that several hundred dollars, are just a GoTech inside with an extra box on the outside and somebody else's name. So, um, I believe that GoTech are the company that... that um, developed this. And I say this because I've watched some YouTube videos of some of the other more expensive ones and the software they use is exactly the same right down to the, the Chinese characters in the user interface. So I believe GoTech are behind the whole thing. Now you use that software I mentioned and you format up to a hundred virtual floppy disks on the flash drive. You do this on your computer. And having done that you can plug this in and you can select, this is the tens and this is the units. It only counts up, unfortunately, but it starts on zero, zero, which is like the first floppy in the stack. And you can go one, two, three, four, five, or uh, 25, 35, 45, depending on that. So this seems like an incredible thing. I mean, for those of us who have old synths that use old floppy drives or old sequencers or um, MC grade stuff, uh, the, you know, the, the possibilities are pretty big. SY77, Yamaha, um, Roland, uh, XP80. And uh, now, of course, <laughs> warning up front, this isn't automatically going to work for you. Um, and I found out why. I, uh, I First thing I did was I looked inside and I was doing this for the XP80 project, which we're doing sort of separate to this. And that's uh, going to be a fun project when it's taken to its completion but um, right now I wanted to replace that floppy drive on the XP80 so the first thing I did was I checked out to make sure that in fact the floppy drive in the XP80 was an IBM style because if you go back to earlier products by Roland like the MC500 um, not a genuine genuine IBM style floppy drive in there um, more in common with a Commodore uh, and uh, believe me, my MC500 is sitting on a shelf. I have no plans on doing any work on it, even with one of these. Uh, it's obsolete. But um, the XP80 is another story. XP80 is a nice, nice workstation keyboard, and it has a MRC sequencer on board, so it may actually be a worthwhile, worthwhile candidate for this sort of thing. At any rate, let's have a look at this thing, and uh, I'll explain to you. Uh, we do have a problem with dealing with the XP80. And the main problem with the XP80 is that um, I believe, from what I can tell, it accesses the drive all the time. It has the drive always on. And uh, what that essentially does to this guy is it prevents, it prevents you from changing the virtual floppy on the front panel. And uh, the reason for that is, uh, well, I'll open the disk and we'll, I'll open up the box and we'll have a look inside. I already took the screws out, so we can just do this in real time. <laughs> One hand never really cuts it, does it? 